Welcome back to the channel. It's Arrow with Passion to Profit. And in this video, we need to talk. And what do we need to talk about? We need to talk about the overall market because it's sitting at a very critical level. And I definitely want to make this video because I know a lot of people are over here following blindly. I encourage you not to follow blindly. Learn your technical analysis. Learn what fundamental analysis is, technical analysis is. Be self-sufficient so that you can trade your own way, have your own reasonings for things. And I guarantee you will see a lot of growth in your individual trading. So, are we going to see a second market crash? I don't know. Does anybody know? Nobody knows. But we need to be looking at key factors, especially some of the fundamentals and what's going on in the country. We have COVID. COVID news coming out. You know, we have numbers rising again. A lot of news outlets talking about the spike in numbers in certain areas. And the market is just really fragile right now. So any news, good or bad, can really send the stock price um, flying either up or down. So we don't really know, but it's important to understand what's going on. You know, you don't want to just be buying and holding things, just be a sheep in the market. Understand critical levels in the market, understand what they mean, and be consistent. Before we get into this video, be sure to destroy that like button. This is actually the second time I'm recording this video. I just recorded it before this and there was no audio. So that's pretty annoying. Again, if you do get some value out of this video, be sure to destroy that like button. Now I'm going to get into it, do some technical analysis, some breakdown on the SPY, and then I'm going to go over AMD. I have some put options on AMD. I'm going to explain some of the critical levels I've seen on that and why I saw value in it and just explain my thought process. So first we have SPY. Um, right now it's bouncing near that 200 SMA line and it's looking bearish in my opinion, especially with the news and everything that's coming out. I mean, the Dow even lost a record points um, the other day when this thing had a massive sell off. And if we zoom in a little bit more five day, five minute chart, I'm going to break down some key levels. So that day on the sell off is giving us first an indication that we could be headed for a second sell off. And I put a line at this 300 level. The 300 level is a whole number. OK, so that's going to be really important anyways. And that 300 level is near the highs. That's how you know it's an important and critical level on the graph. So that's why I had put a level in right there. That's why it's no surprise that the stock is coming to bounce at that 300 level. Now, the stock closed at or near that 300 level. So what I wanted to look for the next day on Friday was a break of this level. Why? Because it's a 300 level coupled with it's yesterday's close. And when a stock is breaking the previous day's close, that's a very bearish factor. That's something you want to consider. So now when we come over here to Friday, it gapped up and that bounce was really kind of inevitable. OK, after you have such a huge sell off, the market has to take a break. It has to bounce. You know, so that was kind of expected. So I kind of anticipated that bounce and I'll break this down a little bit more because I was actually trading AMD a little bit following the overall market. Now, today comes gaps up, has a sell off from the morning, a bounce again, like I said, when it has an aggressive sell off, it needs a break. It's going to have to bounce somewhere. And the fact that it bounced underneath and hit that VWAP and got rejected, that's another bearish factor. OK, now it got sent underneath that EMA line flying down to that 300 key level that everyone else is watching. OK, it's not just you. It's not just me. Everyone is paying attention to these key levels. Now that it goes down to that 300 level, breaks it, dips under that 300 level already and then pushes back up and has kind of a bullish close, especially for a Friday for the overall market. What is that telling us? Is the damage done already? In my opinion, I feel like the damage is already kind of done. It broke 300. That's showing weakness. It's bearish. So that's my complete opinion. This could easily, you know, turn back around and start making higher highs, you know, especially with how the market's going. Nothing is too far fetched, but I'm just letting you guys know my thought process. Now that I'm very bearish on the overall market, I'm looking at places to buy puts. OK, and I'm going to now go ahead and go into AMD a little bit because this is what I was actually trading. The other day, AMD had a massive push up on the 9th. And when things push up this quick, they can come back down just as fast. And I'm going to break that down a little bit more. So I know we had all these bearish factors, especially with the news and things like that coming out. But when a stock has such a push like this, if it does break this level, it's going to have an easy time sending it back down to this level because there's no consolidation in here. There's no floor. There's no ceiling. There's nothing to catch it. Right. By me seeing that massive push up and then around here, we were getting some COVID news that was making the overall market look very bearish as to why we had a huge gap down and a huge sell off the next day. I knew this level was going to be a little bit easier of a flush downwards. That's why I had bought put options. And then I actually re-entered more put options on the gap up overnight. And again, like I explained, the market has to take a break. These stocks are going to have to take a break after such a huge push, either upwards or downwards. They have to take a break. 
So I got that bounce that I was expecting, you know, didn't predict it, but I'm just reacting to the price and what it gives me. So then I buy more put options. I see it sell off down to the bottom. After we get this sell off, I thought about adding right here on this bounce, but since it didn't break that 300 level yet on the spy, I was really hesitant to. But then you can see we got the flush downwards. And again, like I said, that previous closing price, it breaking the next day is a very bearish factor. So definitely keep that in mind. And since I put options up here at this key level, I'm looking for the market to gap down. I'm bearish on the overall market. That's why I puts. Um, I don't really care about telling you about my position even while I'm in it. That's just my thought process. I don't usually trade options or anything like that, but I am just taking advantage of the opportunity when I see it. Uh, the market is just sitting at a very critical level right now. So it's gonna move up or down, right? And I just wanna make sure I do my due diligence, do my own studying, my own breakdown, my own technical analysis to really confirm my thesis or my reasoning for things. You know, I'm not just saying, oh, um, news, I, you know, put options on bearish or whatever. No, I'm just sharing with you my reasonings on why I'm bearish, why I think it's gonna go down more, and just what's going on overall in the market. I really encourage you guys to go put in your key levels on the charts, put them on the support and resistance. Old support can turn into new resistance and vice versa. Remember that, that's for any stocks you're trading old support can turn into new resistance okay so especially with the overall market i'm looking for this to stay beneath this key level that i have marked off right here at 314. i want it to stay under that level because if it breaks that that could mean okay maybe it was a fake out on the downturn you know what i mean maybe it was a fake breakdown and the people that are buying puts and stuff maybe it's too soon maybe they'll get caught in it i don't know but the market is all about reacting to price not predicting price that's what the market is. If you want to stay in the market, you want to stay afloat, don't predict, react. And also, when you're making a game plan, make sure you stay true to your plan because the plan is going to be no good if you're not executing the plan, right? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. I just kind of wanted to break that down. And again, don't just be a blind sheep in the market just following anybody's call outs or what they think and whatnot. You know, I just wanted to post this to give you guys some of my thought process because maybe it'll help some of you guys out there. So again, if you did get any value out of this video and it helped in any way, be sure to destroy that like button for me right now. I'm going to do more of these technical analysis breakdowns for you guys in the future if this is helping anybody. So let me know down in the comments if this is helping anyone and if you're getting value out of these kind of videos. Again, that's just kind of my two cents on the overall market. I'm bearish until it shows me otherwise. And I'm not going to be stubborn to my positions either, but that's my plan. Make sure you guys are preparing over the weekend for the week. Make sure you know what's coming up, earnings, anything like that. Make sure you're doing your guys' work over the weekend. You know, everything, especially in the market, is done in preparation. Executing the trades and things like that is really the last piece to the puzzle, but everything is done in preparation to the market. Use the weekend to your advantage. You know, nothing's open, so use it to your advantage. Go back down, break things down, break down your old trades. Review, 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 review. Do your studying, do your due diligence so you can be prepared for the overall market during the week. Thanks for taking your time to watch this video be sure to destroy that like button it's our old passion to profit and i'll catch you guys in the next video